Howdy, uh, it's uh, coming off of our day two of our fishing trip here recently. Yesterday we had cold, cold uh, water temperature, 58, got to 70. We had a 12 degree swing in water temperatures. The bike turned on when the water got to about 64. Today it's uh, 8.30 in the morning and as you can see it is extremely foggy. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about fog. You know, the sun tried to break through just a few seconds ago, but it didn't do it. Now the fog settled back in. And I'm not a big GPS person. This is my third boat with GPS. All my other boats, I never had a GPS. And I always kick in myself when it came to running into fog out on the water. Well, the GPS is most important for two things in my opinion. Running in the fog and water temperature. We don't need depth finders from Fort Mansfield fishing the flats to speak of. We we're fishing in less than two or three foot of water. So that's that's not applicable. But the fog and or nighttime running, but the fog is more critical than nighttime running because you have stars and the moon and you can get a little sense of direction. But the fog you will end up running in a circle if you don't have a GPS. Um, at least I had in the past. So GPS is critical for the fog water temperature that's the most two important things I can think of GPS is good for um, so we're gonna head out we're gonna go slow we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna operate the boat wide off of the shoreline probably a mile um, and just take our time and running a safe track as we'll show you in just a quick second about the GPS and the tracks that we're gonna run or you need to have a track but have a safe track where you've done it in the past so many times you know that there's nothing in the way and you're out in deep water where you don't interfere with potential waders. So, so swing wide, GPS are good, fog, water temperature. Um, this is also some excellent, excellent uh, weather for topwaters. So we're going to go out and uh, give topwaters a go this morning. We have really light winds, thick, thick fog. Uh, maybe five mile an hour winds, if that, and it's going to be, it's going to be, could be a really, really good day. So we're just luck on that. Uh, so we'll see you. track on the GPS. We're staying way off the shoreline. We're four or five foot of water. Uh, again, you got to take it slow. Lights on. And uh, have whoever is on board with you keep an eye out for other boaters. I can tell a boat has not gone through here right now because there's no other ripples on the water except for the wind. If I start to see little wakes on the bay, I'll slow way down because I know there's another boat in the area that has just driven through or putting through as a result of the fog. But we're way off the shoreline, we're on an outside track, and we're barely on plane, just, just putting along. So if you find yourself in fog, GPS is going to be key. Without a GPS, you'd be doing circles out there. All right, we finally made it to our location um, through the fog. It was really, really foggy. As you can see, it's real, real foggy. We've got a light wind. We think we got a nice little area that we're gonna work through here. We've caught some nice trout here uh, recently. I'm gonna throw back right here. This is the, the big K by K Wigglers. Um, we'll see if it comes back one day. We'll see how it does today though. Just these things, gosh, you can only get a great big.
big old trout. It would be heavy. But I was working my lure real slow. This smoke and mirrors wiggle It's tore up now, but I was letting it set on the bottom, just inching it along right off the grass line. Didn't even feel the fish yet. He just picked it up. But again, real big redfish within slot, nine pounder. caught this fish with about six feet of line out. We kept seeing swirls. We thought they were flounder right in front of us off this little grass line. So I put a ball tail on. Something I don't fish a lot. But I did today. Look at this tail. So, so something worth noting, I was getting this lure out of the redfish, and I bet you we're going to lose it. If you can get down in there, Jimmy. Shrimp. We still have shrimp in the bay. If you can see that shrimp down there, all different little ones and big ones. So what we've got here, we're standing about this deep in water. <clears throat> we're throwing up on this little grass line that uh, that's comes up to a shelf. So we're pulling these baits off of that. This is a slow, slinking, so slow sinking plug. Um, used to be called the Big Kelly. It's been with the Kay Wiggler's family forever and a day. It's an old, old bait and I figured I'd try it today, which has been producing pretty well. I actually caught a real nice trout on it a minute ago and lost uh, three others. But what we're doing, I went up on this shelf. I have I have the uh, tail bent down just a little bit because when I first started out this morning, I had the tail bent up, so it was more like a topwater. And I've noticed that when I bent the tail down, I was getting more hits, so that those fish are were closer to the bottom of the water column. Anyway, I'm just tinkering around today, having a good time. Now this is a heavy bait, so I've got it paired up with a uh, fishing tackle unlimited. G2 green rod. This is the, one of the prototypes. I actually broke the tip off of this rod, so it's around a 6.4. Um, and I've got it paired up with the new Metanium Shimano uh, baitcasting reel. Excellent combination. You can zing this thing forever um, real far out there. The rod's got a lot of backbone to it, and it's a, just a tad shorter. So it's working real well with these heavy, heavy baits, a big top water, a corky, or maybe even a bait like this. but. A heavy bait, real stiff rod, a lot of backbone, sensitive, and um, we're able to sing it out there real far and catch fish on it. So it's a pretty, pretty good combination. We're throwing the big Kelly. Might be a trout. from the past right here, Jimmy. Finally, we've had a couple slapping at it. I missed another big one earlier. I didn't know what it was. But, got a bunch of hooks here. You gotta be careful. But he nailed it. She nailed it. Nice fat one. Let's check out this, this lure here. It's been around for a long, long time. Pat Kelly actually made this bait. It was called the uh, Big Kelly back in the day, and it's basically a corky style bait. It's got eyes on it, it's got a wire in it. We've got, there's a floater version and a uh, slow sinker. This is a slow sinker right here, but a cool bait. It's a concept of a 
slow sinking plug but we've decided to put it on today to see what see what happened it is corky season so to speak and uh, don't throw them often when I wanted to try it but anyway that's what it is right there it used to be called uh, the Big Kelly originally right there and it works pretty effectively you can walk it on top just twist the wire down like I was doing have it dart up have it dart down do whatever it's gonna do and uh, that trout wanted it right there that's for dang sure so we're gonna let this trout go pretty cool bait though we'll see if we see if they come back or not stay tuned for that so we came in a little bit early we got the we fought the fog this morning we made it safe we set up where we thought we would have the best opportunity to capitalize on that minor feed this morning in which we did we got to break out some old stuff uh, today we threw it and it proved to be pretty darn successful with some nice fish we didn't get all the fish on camera but we got some good ones on camera um, uh, we, st we just we stayed with it, you know, fished through that fog, let the fog lift, and then this uh, bluebird sky day, the wind shifted out of the east, the bite kind of slowed down, and we had an early day anyway, so we figured we'd come on in, but it was successful. We had the fog um, set up where I thought we would be in the best place for a good bite when that minor feed kicked in, which it did. We caught them, and uh, calling an early day, coming back in, so until next time.